Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Before I get started here, I want to give a shout out to Mike who sent in these TEA 2025B stereo amplifier ICs. So thanks for sending that in Mike and also for the monetary contribution. Really appreciate that. I had some people wanting me to do reviews of those ICs and well I didn't have any so well no excuses now so I'll probably make a uh, chip amp done right type video on those at some point don't know when I'll get around to it but that will certainly happen in the future so what I have on the bench here is a new audio player sitting next to my two old ones this is the Fio or Fio, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. M3 Pro. Here's the packaging. It comes in a plastic gift style box. I really need to do something with the, my camera setup. I can't get everything in the shot, but thinking about getting an arm and mounting my camera on it. Right now I just have it on a tripod mini tripod sitting in front of me so yeah that's the packaging here's the player it's all touchscreen based aluminum sides it does have some buttons on the side but right here this is the main reason I bought that it takes memory cards and that's the problem with these old Sony's here and of course it shows fingerprints but yeah these Sony's even the new ones I was looking at it's all internal memory and it's the same ten, as it was 10 years ago when I got these 8 gig here I think there's a 16 gig model there was a 16 gig model back then the reason I have two of these, I bought one for my dad. He said he wanted a music player after he saw mine, but he never used it. It just ended up in a drawer of unused electronics. One day he was cleaning it out and gave me an old digital camera, a window CE palm top, and this. So I ended up with two of these players. Problem is, my music library is too big to fit on both of these. So sometimes if I want to put music on that's not already on there, I have to delete something from one of them and fit the new music on. Or if music's on one and not on the other, I have to, you know, switch them around, which is not a big deal, but mainly is that my entire music library does not fit on these. Well, with the card, you can buy a larger card, of course. They're not very expensive and I can fit my entire music library on one player. Another issue is the output level. These will drive cheaper headphones like those walk, you know, the older Walkman style 16 or 32 ohm headphones. Okay, but if you have a nicer set, I have a set of Sennheiser 68 ohms, I believe they are, and you have to turn these almost all the way up before you get a normal listening level whereas this will put out a higher output voltage to drive nicer headphones with maybe not the nicest one you know you get into the some of the uh, audio file stuff that has 300 or 600 ohms maybe not to that level where you need a special amplifier for those but this will probably handle maybe up to 200 ohm headphones just fine because it puts out a higher output voltage now I'm not going to get into a review of you know overall review this is mainly an audio review where I hook this up to my oscilloscope and look at waveforms like frequency response and stuff like that so it's touchscreen based you know it's like your uh, your smartphone, where you, your finger gestures where you swipe and pick and you know stuff like that. It does have some buttons on the side. That's kind of handy. And the screen takes up pretty much almost the full front where these are just small screens like that. 
if you can see them here. The Sony's, the battery life is still decent, but it's not as good as it was when they were new. Like I say, I think it's been 10 years, maybe more, that I've had these things. A couple things that the Sony's have that this does not. This has a user adjustable equalizer, a couple presets that you can save to, and it has the typical presets like jazz, rock, and pop, and stuff like that. However, I don't use the equalizer. I found with a really nice set of speakers I ended up with, when I plug this into my amplifier, I really don't need any equalization. I'm pretty happy as the music comes out. The Sony's also have stereo receivers, FM stereo receivers in them, but they're insensitive, and even on strong stations, they give you hiss, so never really used them at all. So I'm not going to miss the equalizer or the stereo. So to wake this thing up, you just press this top button. And uh, it's like a phone. You have to swipe the thing open. And I was playing the band music from the Big Pink this morning. So yeah, you, you can just swipe around, get to your music library. Of course, this is the main screen here. And settings, system settings. Let's go in here. This is what I like here. Select output. It has a line output mode, or I'm not sure what that stands for, but that's for normal, uh, maybe power out or something like that, maybe for headphones. Um, so you can set it for line out. It gives you a warning because with line out, it, it's going to be pretty loud. But I just leave it on that, on uh, standard output, so you can use the volume control because line out doesn't give you volume control just like any other line out device is going to be fixed has some stuff on here like an e-reader I don't know why I would use that the calculator oh that's a big selling point no square root key <laughs> no inversion key give me a break yeah it's extra stuff I don't need I just want the music playing capability okay that's really all I'm gonna say on this there's other reviews that get into the menu and all that stuff more but I'm gonna hook this up to the oscilloscope and see how it does audio wise at least for listening it sounds fine to me I don't have one bit of problem with the actual sound when I plug it into my amplifier and listen to the speakers okay so I want to compare the output levels from these players so we'll begin with the Sony I made a 1 kilohertz file in audacity that's as loud as the file can be made 0 dB reference you know any higher it would clip but it digitally clip so it's as loud as it can be I have the volume all the way up, as loud as it can go. Output's driving into these 33 ohm resistors. It's close enough to 32 ohms. The reason I'm using that value is the M3 Pro spec says that it can drive 75 milliwatts into a 32 ohm load, which is pretty good for driving headphones. So here's the waveform on the scope and this is what I was talking about you know, it's not even 500 millivolts RMS of output so that's why it has a problem driving into a line level type input from an amplifier and it has problems driving the nicer headphones that's one reason why I built this this preamp for my bench because I was using this as a signal source to test amplifiers because I can 
you know, pre-make all of the waveforms and frequency sweeps and all that stuff and just use this. Plus the volume control is kind of coarse. You know, when I turn it, one step is a big difference. Whereas I can use the volume control on this and uh, carefully adjust the waveform as well as amplifying it into a bigger signal. Okay, so now I want to do a frequency sweep. So I'll find adjust on the scope here so that the peak of the waveform touches this graticule and the bottom peak at that graticule. So I might go up just a little bit. Okay, that's good. So now I'll run the sweep. Let's do a 10 to 100 hertz sweep first. And I probably should slow the scope down quite a bit. Let me reset that. Yeah, it's perfectly flat. Almost there, it stayed perfectly flat. There it recycled again. So perfectly flat from 100, I'm sorry, from 10 to 100 hertz. So let's do the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. One thing I noticed with this player, and I always mentioned it when I was testing amplifiers, that it would slightly breathe up and down a bit going through the sweep. So you can see it's a little high here. And then it'll shrink down right to where it should be again. Okay, we're almost at 20. Right before it gets to 20, it'll start to shrink and jiggle a little bit. See that? So it's just at the very end, it starts to shrink down just a little bit. It might have something to do with the digital aliasing filter, I don't know. But, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty flat response. Okay, so now we're on the M3 Pro. I'm playing the same file I copied onto it as well. And I have to see what volume I'm at. Oh, i got to restart the file here. I have to set it to auto-repeat. Okay. So volume level is at 41. And this one goes up to 60. So let's crank this up to 60. So look how much larger that is. And you're going to... Set that for course adjust. What a difference. 1.61 volts. So 1.61 volts RMS squared divided by 33 ohms, because that's the resistor value I'm using, gives me 78.5 milliwatts. So yeah, it's definitely living up to its specifications. Another thing you notice with both the Sony and this player at max volume no clipping so that's one neat thing of these digital players that you can never clip the audio I mean if the recording or the original signal was already clipped sure but you know there's no way you can clip even at max volume something that wasn't clipped before okay so what I'm going to do now is put it into line out mode and see what that does I think it stops the thing from playing when you do that so okay it set it to 1.62 that's about what it was before but the volume control has no effect so what it's doing is just setting it to max volume see I'm turning the volume down but it's not having an effect because it's just locking it at max volume in 
line out mode. So I'll set it back to the headphone out mode and start it playing again. And there you go. I turned the volume down, so that's why it's smaller. So I turned the volume back up and it goes back up. So yeah, that's all it's doing with line out. It just fixes it at max volume. That seems to be a pretty hot line out for a consumer level. I think pro level isn't that like 1.28 or something volts RMS. So that's a pretty hot line out. I'm not positive. I'd have to look that up. But yeah, even if you don't want to use the line out, if you find it's too hot, you can still adjust the volume. And I had I adjust in my setup I use the volume control anyway. But there you can see it has a lot more capability than the Sony player that was really limited on its output voltage. Okay, this is the ten and about thirteen. I preset it up so same deal, it's got to be at the graticules there. And we'll let it sweep through. Okay, we're almost there. And it's looking pretty flat to me. Okay, the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. Let's see what it does when it hits 20 here. I saw a little bit of a shrink. It, it shrinked and started over. I guess it's something something to do with the aliasing filter. But for like I say, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty flat. Okay, for the final test, I'm going to test distortion. But first, let's see how squishy the cat is. Ah, sticker, she's squishy. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, leave me be. I'm trying to sleep. Okay. So I'm using this artist software. Right there. And you can use it with your sound card. I did a video on this before when I was testing the JAT501 amplifier project if you happen to watch my channel. So I'm connecting to the line in of the computer. I'm playing back the one kilohertz signal. So there's the signal. There's my cursor. And uh, tiny little thing here, a tiny little spike at 3000, but it's almost 100 dB down, so it's very low. One problem I had with this, if you remember from that other video, I was getting these non-harmonically related spikes. You know, if it was harmonically related, it'd be exactly in the center of these lines or on these grid lines. These are not, and it's either generated in the computer, or it could be in the player, I guess, but I doubt it. Because when I tried to test higher frequencies, I was getting these spikes way up around 40-some kilohertz. It's just a limitation with the computer. I was unable to get higher frequencies. And you see it jump around sometimes, that's because... I have this playing in a loop, that one kilohertz waveform, and it recycles every so many seconds. So at one kilohertz, I'm getting 0 0.002 or 3, something very low. This is plus noise. When you're plus noise, you're it's seeing these spikes because it's not a direct harmonic it's just some crap in the signal so that's why that's going to be higher than the THD but you know this is pretty low 0, 0.00 and this is probably much better 
the sound card is going to introduce its own distortion as well. But, you know, it's just low enough. Now, I'm not going to test this one because I kind of did in the other video. I passed its signal through this preamp, through this power amplifier. This is the JAT501 amplifier project. Then I took that signal and put it into the computer through an attenuator network, of course. And I was getting very low as well. I was getting like 0 .004, I think. So, you know, all of these devices in the signal chain are extremely low on distortion, at least at 1 kilohertz. But I, I didn't do so hot trying to get measurements at, you know, at the low end of the frequency band and the high end of the frequency band because of the limitations of my uh, computer sound card. Well, it's actually on board Realtek audio chip, but at least it gives you an idea that distortion should be pretty low. I'm trying at 20 hertz. It's pretty low, but see, I'm getting this ridiculous number here. There's nothing on here that high. You know, you'd have a spike way up here if I was getting that kind of level of distortion. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. So you have to go in and set its built-in generator, even though I'm using an external signal source, because it bases its calculations off that. So I'm now doing 20 hertz, so I set its generator at 20 hertz. So it, you know, it's calculating off of that. But yeah, this, something, uh, I'm not doing something right, or, you know, something's kind of wonky here. There's just no peak that I can see. I have to see if I'm stopping at 20 kilohertz or it's going beyond that. Maybe there's something going on. Okay, here's at 10 kilohertz. That's the highest frequency file I have on this thing. Of course, the uh, fundamental there and little spikes. I'm not seeing those oddball spikes, those non-harmonically related spikes I had before. So I'm not sure what's going on now. But you can see distortion is still pretty low. It's under 0.1, down around 0 0.01, kind of flipping around there. The noise is a bit higher. But if you look here, you know, this is all down around minus 100. And I can see these couple little spikes. But again, I don't know if the sound card's producing that or this is. I would guess that it's the sound card. Without characterizing the sound card, I'm just kind of flying blind here. But at least I know that the distortion is low enough that you couldn't <clears throat> excuse me you couldn't hear it. I mean the second harmonic would be at 20k, and the rest would be uh, supersonic or uh, like ultrasonic. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Just wish I had uh, better equipment for testing distortion. This is a lot better than the oscilloscope can do, by the way. But like I said, I need to characterize the, the computer's audio system before I can really trust these measurements. It wouldn't be any higher than these, but it could be a lot lower. That's what I'm saying. Well, there you go. The review of the FIO or FIO M3 Pro music player. I'm pretty happy with it. A couple little annoying things is, you know, sometimes you accidentally touch the screen and something else happens. It's just the way it is with touch screens. And uh, I believe that's a USB-C port. All my cameras and other items use different types of connectors, the more common ones. 
So this is yet another port I have to deal with. But they do give you the cable, so we're okay there. It's fairly intuitive, easy to use, don't have to use any instructions, it has a lot of settings you can adjust. So, as far as audio quality, I'm happy with it, at least from what I can measure. I'll probably still use this for audio tests, because I have the preamp. I still need to fine-tune the level, because of the discrete steps of the volume controls these things have. Plus, if I have this connected and I accidentally touch the wire to a rail of an amplifier or something like that, you know, I don't want to blow my good player up. I'll have these. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. And I can't resist not squishing the Snickers again. What? No, he's saying, let me sleep.